Okay, uh, so we're going to be answering the question today. And by the way, I do take questions and answers. Not that I'm an expert, but I may have a little bit more idea than you, in which case you may ask if you do, if you don't have an idea. Uh, and I'll take questions by email and I'll post videos about the answer. If they relate to your research specifically, I will not post your research problem. Um, I'll probably communicate with you on what's suitable to post online and what's suitable to just keep uh, secret because you're trying to publish something. Okay, so what is the behavior? The first question I'm getting, I got, what is the behavior of a piezoelectric component if I apply a voltage with a frequency that is not its resonance and anti-resonance frequency? So if it's not resonance or anti-resonance, firstly, it's off resonance. And off resonance uh, at that frequency electrically, you will get something like this effect. You'll have effect of two capacitors in parallel, which one capacitor will be representing the effect of the piezoelectric portion. So if you completely clamp the material, you would not get this, you would not get the effect of this capacitor. And this is sort of the intrinsic dielectric response, which is called the clamped response. So essentially, you would then get a single, of the effect of a single capacitor, uh, which is governed by the uh, primitivity, which you're mostly gonna see in, uh, the uh, company data, uh, provided data, which is the permittivity under constant stress. Uh, this condition is useful for precision actuation. And oftentimes you use off resonance, um, so off resonance meaning lower than resonance for this case, where you want to, you know, really control the motion, uh, you know, or, or you perhaps, uh, so you want a uniform uh, stress distribution of the material. But precision actuation is a very good example of why you would drive off resonance. Uh, at lower than resonance frequency. Right now we just talked about that. Why would you drive at a higher frequency than resonance? Well, actually, there's a very interesting reason you would do that. So the response, the mechanical response of material, if you, if you had the displacement here, and you had frequency here, and use a constant voltage, the mechanical response would look like this. And this is a one degree freedom, a one degree system model, it's approximation, it has many errors, but, uh, and this is the resonance frequency right here. So if you drive above the resonance frequency, let's say here, you are not getting the maximum vibration amplification. However, something very interesting happens when you drive at a piezoelectric transducer is a high power. The compliance or the stiffness of the material changes. So because you're driving at a high vibration, um, that's not right. Uh, because you're driving at a high vibration, uh, you, the resonance frequency will shift lower. Therefore, you'll get lower lower vibration. And it may shift, depending on how much it shifts, uh, your vibration level will, you know, originally you made your design for this vibration level, but you end up here. <laughs> So because of this vibration change, or because of the compliance change, you want to have your uh, piezoelectric resonator sort of a little bit off resonance to minimize this degradation effect. For example, if you had originally designed your transducer to operate here, basically by the resonance frequency shifting lower because the material gets softer as you excite a large vibration, you would be getting, let's say, a half. Your, your displacement would be half. However, if you did it in this case where you started off resonance, you would only probably decrease maybe, let's say, 10% of what you originally expected due to the shift in the resonance frequency. So typically in transducers, we don't drive them at their resonance frequency because this is unstable, especially you don't drive them here. You don't drive them right below the resonance frequency because what happens is basically if you drive them below the resonance frequency and the vibration is high, the compliance or the resonance frequency is going to shift lower which is going to make you bounce up and vi vibration bounce back down as the resonance frequency sweeps through that point, sort of. So basically the most stable point to drive a resonance trap transducer is above the resonance frequency so that you do not keep getting off resonance on, you know, on resonance and you have sort of a wacky uh, vibration pattern. This is a common uh, technique employed. If you drive it above the anti-resonance frequency, uh, you know, and just, just showing a basic electrical diagram where we have this is 90 degrees phase up here and this is negative 90 here 
Below the resonance frequency, we have a capacitor type behavior. In between resonance and anti-resonance, sometime, many times we have inductive behavior. And above the anti-resonance frequency, we, we again have the capacitive behavior. You don't want to drive your re uh, uh, transducer above the resonance frequency too high because at that point, uh, the material cannot respond. And therefore, it's almost like it gets stuck. So basically, as I showed here, if you increase much past the resonance frequency, you're going to get a very small vibration, even smaller than you would get at off resonance, in fact. So you don't want to drive it at a higher frequency than, uh, but you may want to do that. Why? Because you want to, for example, excite megahertz type vibration. Uh, for a mode which is not ideal. So depending if your application requires a specific frequency but doesn't allow you to design the transducer in a shape that allows for resonance, then you may uh, make things work just by driving off resonance because you have to. You have to produce a signal, a vibration at that frequency, for example, for acoustic sensing of uh, damage in a, you know, uh, in a building or a, a ship or a structure, uh, you may need to drive at higher frequencies to induce certain vibration modes in the material, such as surface acoustic waves. So, electrically, these are the three regions capacitive, uh, uh, inductive, and capacitive again. Mechanically, uh, we, we have the most stable vibration frequency a little bit above the resonance frequency. If you go too far above the resonance frequency, we are going to get. Um, lower vibration but you may need to do it if you need megahertz frequencies uh, or not megahertz necessarily but if your application does not allow for them you can you can make your transducer such that it has a megahertz resonance frequency but you may not always be able to uh, tune your resonance frequency like that although you may always you may want a certain uh, frequency response and off resonance it's sort of uh, a very much a plateau okay that's not Good dust drawing, but it sort of it sort of picks up slowly, um, and, and there's sort of a constant displacement region which happens at off resonance uh, uh, until a certain frequency where things start to pick up a bit. Okay, uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this answered the question. What is the behavior of a piezoelectric component if I apply voltage with a frequency that is not its resonance and anti-resonance frequency?